Ephesians chapter 2. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So we see here that wherein in times past we walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of the flesh. So we were fulfilling the lust of the flesh in times past, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and where by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved. And he hath risen us to go up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, and his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So in this, we see that before we are saved, we walked according to the prince of the power of the air, according to fulfilling the lusts of our flesh and the lusts of our mind. But God has quickened us, made us sit together with, with Christ, made us sit in righteousness, seated in heavenly places, that we no longer walk according to the prince of the power of the air. We no longer desire to fulfill the lusts of our flesh. And we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. But if we go back to Ephesians 1, it says, Paul, apostle of Jesus Christ, uh, by the will of God to the saints that are in Ephesus and the faithful Jesus Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved, in whom we have redemption through his blood and forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of the grace, wherein he hath abounded toward, towards us all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even him in whom also have we obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first tasted, who first trusted in Christ. So the praises of his glory. Right. And, you know, the, these people that are saying that I'm, I'm a false teacher and they're, they're attacking, you know, you say that we are predestined or elected by God. They'd say, oh, that, that's Calvinism. That, that's false. I, Calvinism is heresy. I agree with that. But this is not Calvinism because it's in Ephesians chapter one. Go to verse four. According, he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be bl without blame for him and that he has predestined us unto the adoption predestined. So th these are biblical terms, and I'll, sh I'll show you another one. See, another word these guys hate is election. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadonia, Asia, and Berthina, elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father through sanctification of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace unto you, and peace be multiplied. So we, the elect of God, the ones who are chosen according to his foreknowledge before the foundation of the world. We have been sanctified of the Spirit unto obedience and the sprinkling of his blood. Okay, now you got Revelation 22, which is the very last chapter of the Bible. And right here. I am Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, 
that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the holy city. So, blessed are they that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into his holy city. But if you got these preachers who are preaching these false doctrines reading this, they would say, blessed are they who do his commandments? That's works. We don't do works, that's works. So, they, they would crap on the word of God saying that that's works, but it's not. See, uh, Philippians chapter 2, where, uh, starting at verse 12, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation, salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmuring and disputing, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world, holding forth the, world of, the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yet if I offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause do ye joy and rejoice with me. So, it's, it's going to say, Where my, Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not for my presence, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation in fear and trembling. But the thing is about working, it is God that works in you both to well and to do for his good pleasure. So the power of God entering you, you become given the power to become sons of God according to to his election, that he has chosen you in the beloved before the foundation of the world, that you should be holy and without blame. And again, given you power to become the sons of God, seated with Christ in heavenly places, to become the righteousness of God, to not go after the former things, the lust of our flesh, according to the prince of the power of the air. We are now sons of God, and we no longer walk after our lust. We walk towards righteousness, because we are no longer slaves to sin. We are slaves to righteousness. If we are truly chosen in the beloved and elect of God and given the power to become sons of God, then these things come naturally. We become slaves to righteousness instead of being slaves to sin. You know, these false teachers say, oh yeah, you can sin, you can continue in sin. You can habitually sin all you want. You can be a pedophile and never repent of that. But as long as you believe in Jesus, you're good. Well, there is a faith that is a faith that is not a saving faith. There is a true faith and there is a false faith. And I, I made a video about that before in James. Because faith without works is dead. Having the works of God in you coming through you, that you may do the things that are good and pleasing to God according to his good pleasure, according to his power that works in his children, whom he has elected before the foundation of the world according to his foreknowledge. These things are completely biblical. You know, we go over here to Romans 6. These people are saying you can continue in sin because we have grace. But what does Paul say? What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin, that grace may be abound? God forbid. How shall we, that are dead in sin, live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us, as were baptized into Christ Jesus, were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, but he that is dead is freed us is freed from sin. So if you are dead to sin, we still are in our mortal bodies, so we are gonna fall into sin. Yes, I'm not saying that we're sinlessly perfect, because John, you know, the book of John one, it goes into uh, it's one John. Uh, I think it's uh chapters 8 and 9, I'll go into there after this, but it, it says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. So we do have sin, but we don't continue in sin. We have God in us chastising us, convicting us, because we are his children. If, if he was a father that would not chastise, convict his children of their sins, he is not a father who is worth his salt, because a father who loves his children will rebuke, chastise. Hebrews chapter 12, starting at... Uh, Verse, I'm going to do verse 5. Have you forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto us, unto you as unto children? My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastiseth, and he scorneth 
every son whom he receiveth. So if you're truly his son, God's going to be convicting you of your sin. He's going to be calling you out of it. But if you are a son of the devil, you're going to say, go ahead, sin. It's okay. You're saved because, you know, you, you, you believe for a brief second, and now you can continue being a son of disobedience because you, 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 you believed. But these people, you know, they're, they're taking these verses and they're picking them out of context. And I, I would say that if the power of God was not given to us to be renewed unto a new life, that if we remained in our old man and the old man was not crucified, and we were not given the resurrection of Christ, they would be right. But they're not right because we do have the power of God. We are transformed. We are renewed. We are chastised and rebuked of God. We are told to be holy as he is holy and walk in holiness. It's simple. All right, so 1 John chapter 1, I'm going to start in verse 5. Then this is the message which ye have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie. We do not the truth. We lie and do not the truth. But if we walk in light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all his righteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So we do sin. We do have sin. Yes, but... Can, can I say that, you know, let's just use the context here of the, these false teachers, because one of these teachers has been accused of being a pedophile by four people. And the Bible says, don't believe a report of one, but if, if two or more, then you should consider it. So if you, if you got a report from four people, including his own church, saying that he's not allowed to do the things that he did in the past because parents came up and said they don't like the way he's conducting himself around their children and he's been pulled away from that. But yet when we say that, you know, he, he's been accused of pedophilia and we're saying that's not Christ-like, does he say like, no, I haven't been confu confused with pedophilia. No, I'm not doing that thing. He, no, he doesn't. He say, you guys are antichrists. And then he goes on to say, we can continue in sin and keep doing these things because grace be abound. But that's not true. The Bible says, shall we continue in sin because grace be abound? God forbid. I've read that. But I'm not saying that we're perfect. I'm not saying that we have no sin in us. I'm saying that God will convict. God will give us the power. And if he gives us the grace to overcome something, he's asking us to overcome it. It's that simple. He won't ask us to do anything that he doesn't give us the grace to do. But if he's given us grace to do it, we ought to do it. You know, if we are brides of Christ, if we are going to go to the marriage, if, if you were engaged to someone you, you were ought to marry, and you had these certain things like, uh, with Jesus, it's like, don't fornicate, don't lie, don't steal, don't covet, don't be an idolater. These people will not inherit the kingdom of God. And the Bible also tells us the people that do these things, or if they call themselves a brother and are fornicator, purge that self, that person from among you. They're wicked. They're, they're not in the truth. So if you're engaged to a woman and you have the, these set standards, but let, make sure they're godly standards, like, you know, the woman you're going to marry, if she's out fornicating with other people, are you going to marry her still? If she doesn't do the things that you see right to do in a relationship, are you going to marry her still? Do you think God is serious about covenant, or do you think he's just all willy-nilly about covenant? Because these are some serious things to consider. If we are children of, children of God, we ought to walk in the light, not in darkness, and tell people that, oh yeah, it's okay to walk in darkness because we have grace. No. Shall we continue in sin so that grace may be abound? God forbid. It's simple. But those who have not tasted of the power of the Holy Spirit, those who know not the truth will not understand these things because they're complete foolishness. They want to walk after their own desires, after their own lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of their hearts. But not after God. They want to walk after themselves. So they try anything they do to justify it, but they don't want to go to hell. So they make up lies and they deceive themselves, self-deceiving. These things are not the truth. You know, the Bible tells us to stay away from idols. And 
the commandment that Jesus gave that Jesus gave you said, a new commandment I give unto you, love the Lord your God with all your mind, all your heart, and all your strength. The second commandment is like the first, but to love your brothers and sisters as I have loved you. So if we are ought to love God with all our mind, all our heart, and all our strength, let's let's say you have lust in your heart, and you go after lust, and you're you're out fornicating with women, watching pornography, and doing those things to fill your lust. You make those things an idol. Why? Because that fulfillment that you get from those things, you're robbing God because God wants to be your fulfillment. Jesus can give you everything you need. You know, as my banner on my profile says, Jesus fully satisfies. And he fully satisfies in every way. You don't have to go chasing after these things. Putting things above God for your satisfaction. You make those things an idol. And you break covenant. You completely break covenant by putting those things above God. Going after the things which are pleasing to your flesh instead of going after Jesus to allow him to be your pleasure, your joy, your fulfillment. And God is serious about his covenant. But only those who have been called according to his foreknowledge, elected, before the, foundation, before the foundation of the world, given power to become sons of God, to walk in the light, to turn away from their evil. Because the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Yeah, hate evil. Not saying, oh, well, it's okay, we can do those things, we can go after those things. No, you're supposed to hate it. If you fear the Lord, you hate evil. And if you understand what the scripture says, according to scripture, it says understanding is to turn from evil. Right here, job 28, verse 28. And unto men he said, Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. So if we have the Holy Spirit, and we are renewed, we are sons of God, chosen in him before the foundation of the world, elected to become sons of God, given the power to become sons of God, given the Holy Spirit, and given a new life, that the old man has passed away, that the new all things are made new, and we are set on holiness and made in the image of Christ, and that we renew our minds in Christ. You got Luke 6, chapter 43, and just read this, this little extra right here. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit, neither does a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit, for of thorns, yeah, for of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather grapes. A good man out of his good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of an evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth shall speak. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and hear not my sayings, whoever, whoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. And he is like a man which has built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat I don't know how to pronounce that word, vehemently upon that house, and could not shake it. For it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that is without a foundation, built an house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat violently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So if you call him Lord, you must do the things which he says. And what are the things which he says? Love the Lord your God with all your mind, heart, and strength, and to love your brothers and sisters as he has loved us. So if you're going after your sin for fulfillment, you're being a slave to your sin. You're serving your sin. The sin is your master because that is what fulfills you. But if Christ is your master, you're going after righteousness. You're a slave to righteousness because his righteousness is what fulfills you. You know, the, these free gracers, they said what I was teaching is wrong, and I sat down on May 6th, and I started reading Genesis, and I went straight through the Bible, and I finished it yesterday. And I went through the full counsel of the Lord, considering that, yeah, maybe they're right, maybe I am missing something. But after I went through the Bible and considered the full counsel of the Lord, seeing all these things, 
I can say in all faith that they are dead wrong, that we cannot continue in our sins, that we are chastised. God rebukes us. God makes us into his, his image. You know, we, the image of Christ being formed within us. 